The theme of my speech this afternoon is the history of the party, the falsification of party history, the political meaning of Cochranism and its social base, and the perspectives of the party struggle. The history of our party is the history of a consistent and uninterrupted fight for the program and perspective of the coming socialist revolution in the United States. Without once making a single concession to American imperialism or to Stalinism, the two enemies we started out to fight 25 years ago. This year, we will celebrate the 25th anniversary of our party. And we can do it proudly because there is not one single stain on our banner. I am here today to defend the 25-year record of our party and the leadership which has shaped and directed it from the beginning in unbroken continuity for a quarter of a century. I am here to defend that record against any attack from any source. Genuine revolutionists, hemmed in by a world of enemies, are privileged to de differ and debate among themselves. They are not privileged to fight and to split. The party has always permitted differences of opinion and has never expelled anybody, not one single person, because of his opinion. But we have to remember that the Socialist Workers' Party is a revolutionary party and never pretended to be anything else and never asked anybody to join it on any other basis. And we try to keep people in the party on that basis. And as long as they remain revolutionists, they love the party and stay in the party and never think of leaving the party. But when they cease to be revolutionists, as some have in the past, we noted invariably that their attitude undergoes a complete and profound change toward the party. They begin to hate the party. The party becomes a prison for them, and they insist on breaking out, as many have done in the past. Revolutionary party. If you want to know the real reason, and I have been told that there has been talk of split in the New York discussion. Party history is very important. But it ought to be written honestly. At one stage in the struggle of the left opposition in the Soviet Union, the struggle against the Stalinist degeneration, Trotsky found it necessary to take time out from the current political and ideological battle to restate for the benefit of the Soviet youth some of the true facts about the history of the party and the revolution which had been buried 
under the mud and filth of Stalinist lies. This endeavor of Comrade Trotsky to inform the Soviet youth of the truth of their party history took shape in a classic document called the Stalinist School of Falsification. We published this work in the early days of our fight in this country, and many of our cadres were raised on it. It became a textbook for the education of our cadres and a mighty weapon in our fight against the Stalinist liars. To my great regret, I have to take time out now to perform the same task about the history of our own party, which is the heir and successor of the Bolshevik party of Lenin and Trotsky, which has been the most faithful and consistent representative of the principles of Lenin and Trotsky, of any party in the whole world, and which moreover has recorded its own history more fully and more completely with documentary verification than any revolutionary party in the entire world. Our youth need to know the history of their own movement. They cannot learn to become Bolsheviks without studying this history, in which the basic principles have been demonstrated in action in their own country. We have to fight against the neglect and denigration of party history. And at this stage, in our internal struggle, we have to take a little time out to fight against the falsification of that history.